Peach Scone Pop said, okay, so imagine one week every year men get treated like women. But Iceland actually did this for a day. In real life, Iceland did this. In October 1975, the women of Iceland all took a day off. It was total chaos. The economy shut down. Basic life broke. Hospitals, schools, nursing homes, grocery stores, they all either shut down or operated at half capacity. It was kind of like COVID. And the men had a kind of terrible time. They bribed the kids on sugar, then took them to work. That didn't work. Then about halfway through the day, a lot of them pulled their older kids out of school to babysit the younger kids. Also did not go well. Then the grocery store sold out of sausages which was kind of like their microwave meals. <sighs> Senior bankers and managers had to become the cashiers and bank tellers. They didn't know how, so that didn't go well either. The next day, the newspaper was published half empty. Needless to say, after this, the women got a lot more respect, shortly after the first female president was elected. I don't know about you ladies, but this really sounds like my kind of strike. Now, gentlemen, you may have just watched this video and you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, wow, does this person use any logic at all? And the answer is no. Okay, to quickly address it before we jump into today's TikToks and other bits and pieces, gentlemen. Um, yeah, it's almost like if you remove half the population out of the workforce uh, on a whim, just on one singular day. Yeah, people aren't going to be able to fulfill those positions. You know, and this whole argument about well, let's just remove remove women for a day and uh, make them get treated. You know, make the men get treated like women with all the equality and crap. What equality? You know that women actively choose these positions, right? You know that women earn less money because they choose to earn less money. This whole equality crap, oh, women don't get paid enough for their work or blah, blah, blah. It's like these girls do literally do not pick the positions that pay more money. Like, I don't know what to tell you. This stuff has been, if you pay a man and a woman a different wage on the basis of gender, that has been illegal since like 1964, if I'm not mistaken. Someone correct me in the comments if that's wrong. But I believe since like 1964, that kind of crap has been illegal. Like, these people just want to feel as though they're useful. It's like, guys, you want to get the CEO positions. You want to get the the quote-unquote equality that you want, which, by the way, really isn't equality. It's almost like you have to work for it. Absolute craziness, I know. But, gentlemen, what is going on? It is Taylor the Fiend back again with another response video. And on today's show, guys, we're going to be breaking down a couple of TikToks, having a look at a couple of articles and all that jazz. But if you're new here, guys, you're liking the videos, make sure you subscribe on your way in. Come and join the Discord link in the description if you haven't already. And as always, guys, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, the link to the Patreon is below the video. So if you're interested in becoming a supporter, uh, that's a fantastic way to do it. But guys, I, I, I already went through and recorded this video once and my, my damn uh, Streamlabs just shut for no reason at all. So that's just absolutely fantastic. And I can already tell, like, if you guys watch my videos, um, you already know how frustrating and stupid some of this crap is. Like, it gives you a literal headache. Um, having to watch these people try and use logic, right? And man, like, having to watch the same thing, like, multiple times is just, like, makes me want to pull my hair out. I mean, look at me. I'm going to lose all of this this beautiful animated hair over here. Shout out to the, the Gecko Ninja, by the way. He's the, he's the artist who did this, guys. Um, if you want to commission him, his stuff is in the description. Fantastic artist. Uh, but we're going to jump into today's second TikTok here and uh, see what else other people have to say. Now, let me turn down the volume real quick before we jump into it to use you. I saw this video on here the other day and this girl was giving advice to women. Her advice was literally led with the notion of if you want to make a man jealous. Now hear me out. She says send the man a text saying that you're with friends right now and then you go the whole day through the night and you don't text him at all and then when you wake up in the morning you just say oh I was busy blah blah blah. That man is not going to end up thinking I wish I was with her the whole time. That's not how men think. All you did was make him think that you're for the streets. So if you want to get used, yeah, follow her advice. If you don't, follow my <laughs> Not for real though. Ladies, this be Guys, let's just let's just kind of address this for a moment, all right? Sorry if I just blew your ears out there by the way, guys. I'm trying to eyeball the volume here. Um, but yeah, the question you have to ask yourself is why would men be in relationships with people who act like they're single anyway? You see, these girls out here who want to be strong and independent and, and masculine and argumentative and opinionated, hey, that's totally cool, right? You, you can go out there and do that. Uh, but the thing is, men do not want to get into relationships with people who are like that. In the same way that you do not want to get into relationships with guys who are feminine. Now, you'll get all these girls out here saying, well, I, I really like feminine guys. I blah, 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 blah. Let me check out your <laughs> the, the boys that she's dated, right? Or like, you know... It's like, these girls, what they'll do is they'll try and say, oh, well, we like feminine men. No, you don't. 
you, you absolutely do not. Let me let me say this, gentlemen. If you go on a date with a girl, right? You know, you take her out to lunch or whatever the hell. I wouldn't recommend it. But anyway, let's just say for for argument's sake, um, you go out and you take a, a girl to lunch or you take her out to dinner to a bar or something like that. If you go and do that and you do not lead the interaction, please expect to not see that girl again, at least in a romantic capacity. You know, she might string you along for the friendship benefits, which, uh, you know, don't actually mean bedroom fun. What it means is attention and resources and time. Um, she might string you along with that. But guys, if you are not leading a situation, if you're not assertive, if you're one of those guys who says, well, I don't know, what do you want to eat? Please expect the fact that she's like, she's just going to up and leave sooner rather than later. Okay, this whole crap about like, oh yeah, well guys, can, what they're doing guys is what they're, they're trying to apply what they think that they like, which is usually wrong to men as well. Okay, and the things that they and the things that they do like as well, they're also applying that to men. So I'll continue this video in a second, guys. But what I mean when I say that is, um, if you're a guy and you've got no girls who like you, maybe you haven't got a lot of friends, a lot of social status, you better believe that not a lot of girls are going to deal with you, if any. Okay, because women are attracted to men who already have social status, who already have girls. So what do they think to themselves as well? If I can show that I've got other guys liking me, he'll like me too. No, it just makes you look like a clown. Like, no man wants a girl that is community property. It, it doesn't matter how many times you say it, we're just not interested. Women, on the other hand, are attracted to a guy who's been sleeping around. Because that inherently makes him more valuable. Because men actually have to bring something to the relationships to be selected by girls. Like, that's just the way it is. I got it muted, haven't I? Advice to women. Her advice was literally led with the notion of if you want to make a man jealous. Now hear me out. She says, send the man a text saying that you're with friends right now and then you go the whole day through the night and you don't text him at all and then when you wake up in the morning you just say, oh, I was busy, blah, blah, blah. You see, strategies like this when girls outline this crap to you guys about, you know, what they don't like and stuff like this. And actually, we're going to pull up an, arg uh, an article to demonstrate this real quick. When they talk about this kind of stuff, what they're really saying is... What they're really... You should be taking notes of what they're saying. Okay, because this is the kind of crap that they hate, but they're drawn to. Let me give you guys a quick example. And this is a beautiful little uh, post that I found earlier today. Um, and, you know, this just points out what I'm trying to talk about. So... If, you know, if you guys want to read ahead a little bit, uh, feel free to do so. But you'll get all of these girls who complain about, oh, well, men do this, men do that. And the thing is, you know why they complain about it, guys? It's because all of their experiences are dealing with men who do these things. It's almost as if they are attracted to these terrible things. Now, you'll get girls out here who will say, oh, well, I, you know, I, I hated it because this guy did all of these things. But the fact of the matter is, she chose the man. Men do not generally choose the partners. You know what, it's, it's, not the, it's not the guys going out here choosing who they get to have bedroom fun and relationships with, guys. It is the women who are, who are, who are doing this stuff. Now, the, high, the higher value guys, for lack of a better word, um, will be the ones that can deny relationships and stuff like that. And that's where you get the women crying because they actually have to bring something to the relationship other than themselves. You see, what will happen is all of these girls, because of the, of the amount of free attention that they get, and the free resources that they get. Like, if you think you're the only guy taking a girl to lunch and spending money on her, you are absolutely not, gentlemen. Um, all these girls get all this free crap, right? And so when a guy turns around who's actually valuable and, you know, valuable, valuable in her eyes, at least, right? Um, and says, oh, well, I'd like you to cook for me, or I'd like you to do that. All of these women have an absolute cry because they've never been demanded anything of them. Only, the, all that's been demanded of them is that they show up. But you get a guy that they want, right? Like, I'm talking like six figures over six foot or whatever the hell kind of thing. Or hell, they'll even, you know, the, the guys who are just attractive, but they just want to be one of the girls, his girl, right? Um, you better believe that they'll put up with all of this, all of this kind of behavior, right? They'll, they'll put up with all these un, unrealistic demands that men might have, or realistic ones. Um, but in most cases, guys, men are not out here with complicated demands. Women are out here with the demands that are very difficult to meet. You want to talk about six um, six foot looking good? That requires hitting the gym, making, you know, putting effort into making your money. Um, social status requires, you know, all of these things men have to become. Girls just kind of exist. But guys, we're just going to run through this uh, list real quick in order to kind of, kind of talk about this point. And guys, feel free to leave comments as we go through this stuff. I, I really do enjoy what you guys um, have to say in the comments. A lot of times you guys miss stuff that I, that I, um, 
go over in videos. So if you want to leave a comment what your thoughts and opinions are, uh, feel free to do so below. But anyway, the article is titled, Withholding as a Form of A-Word. Today, I want to discuss the devastating psychological A-Word called Avoidant A-Word or Emotional Withholding. Had I been equipped with this information, my gut feeling, in brackets intuition, would have been affirmed. My former relationship was, in fact, a wordative due to the following reasons. My ex kept his thoughts, feelings, hopes, and dreams to himself only. My ex remained silent and aloof towards me, revealing as little as possible. My ex maintained an attitude of cool indifference. My ex repeatedly stonewalled me after I voiced my concerns. He would disappear for days under the guise of needing space. Upon coming back, my concerns were never discussed or resolved. My ex knew how to create an illusion of intimacy, sharing things that held little to no emotional importance to him. Um, Withholding information was his way of maintaining the upper hand or control in our relationship, ensuring he stayed unattached, potentially a defense mechanism against real or perceived separation slash rejection, ensuring little to no emotional turmoil, shame or guilt for abandoning, abandoning me, excuse me, uh, during, before and after conflict, avoiding accountability for mistreatment. Now, gentlemen, these are the types of lists, um, that you might be looking at list a list like this for the first time, maybe you're new to the channel or you're new to this side of the internet, and you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, wow, poor lady. You know, she's gone through some terrible stuff. All this stuff sounds absolutely terrible. I hope she's okay. I want to just really hammer the point home that women are choosing this. This is not something that happens to them. This is something that they actively, at least subconsciously, look for. Okay, all this kind of crap, you, can, you know this on the outset. I mean, if I got, you know an attitude of cool indifference, not being emotionally open, all of this kind of crap, you can figure out about a person very quickly. But the thing is, this, these are the qualities that they like. So if you're a guy interested in dating, I would suggest that you, whenever you see crap like this, um, you should be taking notes, If you're, it, that is, if you're interested in dating. If you're not interested in dating, like you're going, uh, you know, full ghosting on society, that sort of thing, guys, this list will make, you know, mean very little to you other than having a bit of a laugh and understanding what the hell's actually going on. Um, but guys, when girls complain about, oh yeah, men treat me like this, or they just want a second mother and crap like that, or, you know, they're, they feel so entitled, uh, just look at lists like this, man. It makes it so much simpler to understand, because at the end of the day, like, this kind of crap is really disgusting, because what's happening is, men are being told one thing, and another thing is being done to them. Um, but we're going to jump into another TikTok here, guys, as I find it on my other screen real quick. Okay. Oh, and it is an absolutely beautiful one. Oh, braces. Guys, I've already watched this, like, tried to record, like I said, and the, the thing uh, shut down, the stream lab shut down, so it, like, corrupted my recording. Um, but having to watch this crap multiple times just kind of, <laughs> just kind of does my head in. So we're going to play it through one time and then kind of address the points he makes real quick. Okay, this one is for dudes. <coughs> and this is a perfect example why feminism is beneficial for men. All of you think feminism is hating men. It's not. It's about taking down patriarchy and its oppressive norms. Even though men are the ones who benefit from patriarchy the most, they're still victimized to an extent. You can think of it as misogyny being a two-way street. Patriarchy tells men they shouldn't be vulnerable or show emotions. It uses misogyny to label those things as feminine things. So when men get vulnerable or emotional, they're criticized, made fun of, told to be a man, not to act like a woman. That's toxic as fuck for men. Because men end up bottling up their emotions. They have nowhere to seek help for. They don't know how to deal with these emotions. Patriarchy oppresses all of us. Some more than others, yes. But all of us. So men need to be a feminist also for their own sake. See how we live in a world that may Okay, guys, let's address a few of his points right here. And I want to, again, I'm going to switch back to the article so we can talk a little bit about this, okay? But his claims here are that, you know, um, men are bottling up. Men who, like, so if you come to my channel, guys, you will hear me say, well, you know, being emotional to a girl is a waste of your damn time. It is incredibly stupid. You want to cry, uh, don't cry in front of your girlfriend. I'll say stuff like that. And the reason why I say stuff like that is because if you want to run a girl away, if you want to remove girls from your life as quickly as possible, you know, let's just let's just say, guys, uh, for the sake of argument, you know, you got a girlfriend or something like that, um, and you want to get her to leave you. One of the fastest and best ways to do that is to be emotional 
is to cry in front of her, share your hopes, your hopes, your dreams, maybe not your dreams, right, but share your fears and the things you're scared about and your concerns and cry about it and blah, 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 and all, all this kind of crap. That is the reason why men tell other men not to be emotional is because if you do that crap, you will be heavily punished for it. You want to be emotional? You want to share what you what you care about in life, guys? Um, you know, see a therapist, right? You can talk to you can talk to girls about your ambitions, right? They like that, but you want to talk about you know what makes you sad or all this kind of crap, like all this all this like complaining and stuff like that. You see, women will say, "Oh, please, I want all these things. I want a guy who's emotionally open with me. I want a guy who will share my share his load with me. You know, all the things struggles he's going through." But you'll notice, guys, if you do that for any length of time, like other than two seconds, what's going to happen is she's going to leave your ass. Okay, now, and the reason, again, let me just hammer this home. The reason why men are not encouraged to have those things is because if you have those things, if you're openly emotional and all this kind of crap, you will repulse people from you. Okay, and what that means is you will be socially isolated. Okay, these, the you see... When, go when guys complain about this stuff and they say, oh, well, men should be open with their emotions. No, they abs absolutely should not. That leads to so many problems, it isn't even funny. Again, you want to solve your emotional problems, guys, go see a therapist, okay? Because let me tell you this, your girl will not stick around. And I don't say that to be mean. I don't say that to harm guys. I don't say that to be condescending or whatever the case may be, guys. I'm saying that is because simply it is not practical. It is actually damaging to do what he says here in this video. Now, guys, I, I don't normally do this, but I think I might have done this in the last video. I'd just like to quickly show you um, the hashtags that are on this video. So let me just find a screen capture real quick, and I want to show you what kind of hashtags this person is using, all right? Okay, so let me just bring it over. We got... Uh, let me see where my mouse is so you guys can see it. Men need womanism. Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, look, oh my goodness, this guy's name as well. So let me just scroll up, actually. Let me move it slightly up so you guys can see this. Your local, uh, C word, which I'm not gonna, not gonna share on the channel. I don't particularly know if there's restrictions around that, but anyway. Uh, men need womanism. Hashtag womanist. Hashtag womanism. Hashtag womanista. Hashtag womanistas. You know, you get the idea. Hashtag patriarchy. Hashtag misogyny. Hashtag toxic masculinity. Hashtag bottled up emotions. And the sound that he is using is called the original sound, your local C word. Now, guys, like, I don't... You know, you can follow advice like this, guys, for sure. You, you might be a watcher of my channel and you might think, well, Taylor, all the stuff you're saying is, is completely unhealthy. I would encourage you, like, go out and test it if you want. Like, if you don't believe what I'm saying, if, you know, we talk about divorce over here, we talk about marriage and all this kind of stuff. Um, when we go through these things, gentlemen, it's not, you can think that I'm talking out of my ass, that's totally fine, but at the very least, go and, go and test it, okay? Because a lot of men are getting into situations where they're actually harming themselves by listening to this crap that's on TikTok. Like, and again, I don't have to dig real hard to find this crap on TikTok, guys, I really don't. But gentlemen, we're going to crack into another article momentarily here as I find something else for us to look at. Now, I was going to use this particular article in conjunction with a different TikTok, but we're going to read it by itself here. And the title is, Getting Hit On by Gross Old Men is So Bewildering to Me. Do They Really Think I'd Ever Have Fun With Them? And uh, this, uh, this flair is called The Audacity of Scrotes. Now, I got told what this means right here. Uh, but I'm not sure I can really say it, but I, I, I was kind of silly. You guys can probably infer what this word means right here. Um, you know, it's naming a certain part of the of the man, right? Um, the man's physiology, shall I say. So anyway. <clears throat> I recently got hit on by a man at a bar for the first time in my life. I'm 24, but this was the first time I'd ever been to a bar alone without a giant group of friends. Anyway, this guy starts talking to me and I naively respond because he lives in a city I used to live in and I have nothing else to do since I am uh, I am at the hotel alone for the night. I thought I was just having a nice platonic conversation with a strainer. Stupid, I know. But like I said, I don't have experience with this at all. Guys, I, I have to pause and address this real fast. So, you know, if, if you're a guy and you've been dating for any length of time or you're an older gentleman, you've been around the track a couple times, uh, you'll know that if you're in a relationship with a girl and you say, hey, I don't like the amount that you talk to your guy friends, or I don't like the fact that you're making new guy friends, she'll say something to you like to the effect of, oh, well, he's just a friend. Oh, well, they're just friends, right? And you'll get labeled as this insecure person, which, by the way, is gaslighting. 
you know, for all these girls who want to complain about gaslighting, they seem to do an awful lot of it themselves. Um, but what will happen is, you know, she'll kind of brush it off as, you know, they're just guy friends. But this sentence right here shows that they know what the attention is. They know, right? So you see, platonic conversations with strangers, i.e. going to the girls, going to clubs for a girls' night, which these things will happen, platonic conversations with strangers, they know that that's not what those conversations are. They know. You see, what they do is they keep the guys around for the attention and as a backup plan in, in case you slip up. In case you as the boyfriend uh, don't provide what she needs anymore, I, usually that comes in the form of emotional fulfillment. You know, she needs to chase your validation or sometimes it's money or sometimes it's, you know, or sometimes it's just looking attractive or, you know, it could be any number of things that she's kind of with you, quote unquote. Um, but as soon as you stop providing those things, uh, you know, she, at least she's got the attention on tap and she can kind of monkey branch to another guy. But you see, when it does, when it doesn't benefit them, they want to be like, oh, it's so obvious. But when it does benefit them, they want to like say as though you're the crazy one. But let's continue. Of course, he begins to get flirty and comes up with an excuse for getting my number and I refuse him. He then comes up with more excuses about how to be safer since we're traveling the same direction the next day in case I get a flat tire or something. And guys, we're going to come back to this in a moment if we can before uh, the episode time runs out. But, you know, I once again refuse and say I'm perfectly capable of handing, handling any situation on my own. He responded with, oh, independent, I like that. I get up to leave and he says, see you later, cowgirl. Ah, uh, ew. The rest of the night, I just couldn't get over the fact that this fat, ugly guy in his 30s or 40s thought he had some kind of chance with me, a pretty young woman in graduate school. He also said something about, it's okay, I'm not looking for a sugar baby. I just laughed because I doubt he's rich at all, and I'd never be a sugar baby. The point of the story is the audacity of men is truly stunning to me. Is it the fun clips on the internet that makes them think that they have a chance with young, beautiful women, or desperation? Do they get some sick satisfaction out of harassing us? Probably all of those things. Now, there's a million things we could kind of pull this apart for, for being absolutely ridiculous, gentlemen. And be sure to leave your comments here. But something I want to address here as well, uh, just real quick, is uh, a couple of things. One, yes, men prefer younger women. I know that's crazy and insulting to hear uh, to these girls who think everything is misogyny. But, you know, men do have preferences too. As crazy as that is to say, and men do like younger girls. It is what it is. It's literally biology. These people can get mad at it. And you know what? They will continue to get more and more mad at that fact the older that they get and the less attention that they get. And, that, you know, that's something just incredibly funny. But um, let's look at this here as well. So girls know as well when you're coming up with an excuse. Right, these girls will be like, oh yeah, well, I'm just swapping numbers with this guy um, just because I might need to get my tire fixed in the future. And you know damn well it's because she likes the guy. You see, girls know when there's like an excuse and they, they pull all this crap. But what they'll do is they'll say, oh yeah, it was clearly him being coming on to me. And they'll, they'll use that and they'll say that um, when it doesn't benefit them. But when it does benefit them and they get free attention or like a backup guy, they'll be like, oh yeah, it was, honey, it was just because of this reason that I needed to talk to him. You see, it's very manipulative, guys. It's just, like, the, the depth that this kind of crap goes into is absolutely insane. But, gentlemen, we're going to leave today's video there. As always, if you enjoyed, guys, make sure you subscribe on your way out. Uh, come and join the Discord link in the description if you haven't already. Leave your thoughts below, guys, what you think about today's, uh, you know, the stuff that we covered, whether it be an article or a TikTok. Um, and, guys, if you'd like to support the channel, make sure you check out the Patreon link in the description. It's a fantastic way to support the channel. Uh, so if you're looking to do that, the link for that is somewhere below the video. But, guys, my voice is running out on me. And, uh, as always, gentlemen, take care of yourselves. And I will see you boys in the next one. Peace.